video is going to talk about applications with logs. In 1935, Charles Richter defined magnitude of an earthquake to be defined as m is equal to log times i over s, where i is the intensity of the earthquake measured in centimeters of a seismograph reading taken 10 kilometers from the center, epicenter of the earthquake, and s is the intensity of a standard earthquake whose amplitude is 1 micron is equal to 10 to the negative 4 centimeters. And a standard earthquake is the smallest measurable earthquake known. So the strongest record earthquake in 1960 was given by this intensity, which is actually 3,162,277.77 centimeters. And we want to know what the magnitude is. So m is equal to i, which they gave us, 3,162,000. 277.77 centimeters divided by the standard earthquake, which is 10 to the negative 4, and it's the log of all of this. So we come over to our calculator and say the log of 3162277.77 divided by 10 carat negative 4, close a parenthesis, and we find out that the magnitude is equal to approximately a 10.5, 10.5 actually Richter's is what they call them. And then the last one, the deadly earthquake in 2003 was in southeastern Iran and made a magnitude of 6.6. .6. What is its intensity? Well the magnitude is 6.6. .6. And that's equal to the log of the intensity, which they're asking us for, divided by that 10 to the negative 4, which we know to be the standard. So in order to solve this one, we could, again, convert it to an exponential. And the base is 10, and you hop across the pond to get to the 6.6. And then it's equal to, hop back across to find out what it's equal to, and that's i divided by 10 to the negative 4. And if I want to solve that, I have to multiply both sides by that 10 to the negative 4 to clear the fraction. The in intensity is going to be equal to 10 caret negative 4. And we're going to multiply that by 10 caret 6.6. So that the intensity is 398.107, and that would be in centimeters. So another type of logarithmic application that we use is decibels. Loudness of sound is measured in decibels, and the lowest intensity sound is going to be 10 to the negative 12 watts per square meter, which is what the human ear can detect. So the loudness of sound in a decimal can be found by L of I, loudness of intensity, is equal to 10 times the log of the intensity divided by 10 to the negative 12, when the sound of intensity is 100 watts per square meter. So a sound produced by a hair dryer of intensity 10 to the negative 3 watts per square meter, what is the decibel level of the dryer? So L of I is going to be equal to 10 times the log of the intensity, which we know to be 10 to the negative 3, divided by 10 to the negative 12. Now this is just a plug and chug, and you could stick it right into your calculator if you wanted to, just like this. Or, we do know some exponent properties, so let's just remind ourselves about our exponent properties. When you have the same base and you're dividing, you subtract your exponents. So this is going to be 10 to the negative 3 minus a negative 12, which will be actually be plus 12, or 10 times the log of 10 to the 12 minus 3 would be 9. So 10 log, and then we have in parentheses 10 caret 9, or if you remember anything about properties, you should know that that's going to be 10 times 9, but maybe you didn't know that, so we'll just say this is 90 decibels. Finally, 
The sound of an iPod at peak volume is 115 decibels. That's the L of I. And we want to know what the intensity is. So we're trying to solve for this I. So 115 decibels is equal to 10 times the log of I, which we're trying to find, divided by 10 to the negative 12. So what do we do here? Well, you should know that this is 10 times that log. So we know that we're trying to get to the log by itself eventually so that we can convert, usually logs we convert, or we can take to our calculator. So we have 115 divided by 10 is equal to the log of I over 10 to the negative 12. Hopefully you know that this is 11.5. It goes in perfectly. So 11.5 is equal to this log. And now you've got some choices. Okay, we can convert it, or since it's the log, we actually can graph it. And we haven't graphed a log before, so let's try graphing this one. Clear out any equations we have in there. And 11.5 is going to be my y1, and log, and then I have my x divided by 10 to the negative 12, negative 12. And I should be able to graph that. And let's see if we have enough to be able to graph it. And it looks like we just might. So second trace 5, intersection is what we want to do when we're graphing. Enter, enter, enter. And here's my graph. And here's my y equal 11.5. So obviously I was in a bigger window than a standard. And my graph looks like it goes something like this. And we have x is equal to 0.32 approximately. Okay, and again, if you wanted to graph, if you wanted to do it the other way, you'd have 10 hop across equal sign to the 11.5 is equal to i over 10 to the negative 12. That was a 12 in there. We lost our 1 up there earlier, didn't we? And then i is going to be equal to 10 to the negative 12 times 10 to the 11.5. Add those exponents and you're going to end up with 10 to the, it's negative 12 plus 11.5. It should be 10 to the negative 0.5. And if I take, which is exactly how we usually answer intensity. If you go back, when we did our problem here, we had 10 to the negative 3. That was our intensity. But if you want to check to make sure that our graphing worked, which that works too. 0.32 is okay if this is really that. So 10 to the negative 0.5. Sure enough, that's our 0.32. Same answers, just a different way to get there.